What's up you guys? We're going to Spokane, Washington. We're in Oregon right now, but we'll get to Washington in about 20 more miles. Are we recording this time? Yes, we're recording this time. <laughs> uh, we're on our way to Spokane, Washington. Spokane! It's a six hour drive. Six hours. <laughs> We're making really good time. We'll probably get there in about four and a half hours. So we'll have some time to putz around a little bit. Take a little look around Spokane. We haven't really been there. Never been so, there. So um, it'll be fun. And I will hopefully not scrub out. I'll keep you guys updated between each round. He's playing um, Like and Rock Zor. Yep, Like and Rock Zor. Or Zor, Like and Rock. Well, however you guys want to say it. It's the safest play. I'm not really confident in any standard deck right now. As our area is all expanded, I've been testing expanded for like a couple months now. Expanded cups and league challenges. That's all it's been in our area because we're on the west coast for Portland. It's expanded as well as Anaheim's also expanded. So everything is expanded. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So I'm not confident whatsoever in this uh, tournament. So we're just going to hope and go with the safest play. And as long as I set up a Zorark, you should be fine, right? Right. And you have to win the coin flip. Coin flip. So we'll see what happens. 50-50. Uh, <laughs> it's 50-50 matchup, and it kind of beats Shrine. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I will uh, keep you guys updated in the next clip, so. Bye. See you guys. All right, guys, we made it to the venue. <laughs> We made it to the venue and uh, we had lunch, so we're good there. We got our tummies filled, got some energy, and we're gonna go right to the venue. What are you laughing over there? Uh, so we're gonna go and uh, wish me luck. Um, if it goes to, if I get to top cut, then it'll be till like about nine o'clock because it starts at 2.30. So yep, I will keep you guys updated after the first round, so see you then. All right guys, so I just finished round one. Um, I was able to win pretty well. I was playing against uh, Malamar, Rukan's list from uh, Philadelphia that got second. Uh, my opponent unfortunately bricked after like turn two. He had nothing in his hands. And I was able to bloodthirsty eyes, knock out, uh, he got two NK down turn one. I knocked out one. I knew he just had a Malamar in hand because he friend balled for it. Um, yeah, he didn't have any Lele's in the deck or so. I think he prized a Lele or something. And then, um, yeah, I was able to Guzmo the other, uh, uh, Malamar. He did have um, Marshadow on the bench, but I was just able to capitalize. So I'll see you guys in the next round. Hey guys, so I lost round two. I was playing against this weird like Gardevoir Lycanroc deck, but I just dead drew everything and he was able to load up like a Gardevoir with like eight energy on it throughout the whole game. So it was over for me. Um, yeah, really unfortunate. I definitely should have won that game, but uh, the dead draws, they, they get you. So uh, going to round three, I need to win um, two more for sure to make top cut. So I'm just going to have to try and win it out now because I think my resistance will be bad. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to try. So I'll keep you updated after round three. All right, guys. So end of round three, I played against uh, Metagross, which actually was a deck choice I was thinking about playing. Um, I ended up, he, Steven resolved turn one. I was like, he got two Beldum down and like a Vulpix or something. I'm like, oh geez, here comes the double Metagross. But I had Judge in hand and I had, um, I was able to get two Zerua down and a uh, Rock Ruff. And I attached Fighting Energy to Rock Ruff. And then I judged him and he dead drew the whole time. And then I was easily just able to like ride his beating, um, claw slash the Beldums before he could evolve them. And then uh, there was only, there was a turn where he had a Metagross up and algorithmed and then uh, I couldn't do anything about that, but I ended up dangerous roguing him, going down to one prize, and that was pretty much, I was able to take the last prize pretty easily um, with the Guzma. So, yeah, I got to win one more, and then I can ID, I believe, because it's five rounds. And, yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated on the, uh, after round four. This is, or, this is, uh, round, yeah, this is round four, so this is a really decisive round. So, um, yeah, here we go. Hey guys, sorry, I don't know what happened after the video after round four, but uh, I did win. It was against Ho-Oh Salazzle with an inclusion of the new Reshiram GX. I explained the whole uh, deck, uh, my whole deck at the end of this video, as well as a more thorough analysis of my rounds. So if you want to stick around, you can hear uh, a better uh, description of that round. And um, I, going into this, I thought I was going to be able to ID after that, uh, after round four, but round five, um, actually, I had to play it out because there was two, there was five, uh, three and one. So there was no way I could ID. I had to play it out. 
and um, I did not take video of this because I had to go right after this, but I did win that as well. It was a uh, Buzz Garb Shrine deck, and uh, my opponent dead drew, and I was able to just uh, sweep the game um, going into top cut. I think I was the second or third seed going into top cut. So, yep, so here's some top cut footage for you, and then afterwards we'll get right to the deck list video. Enjoy. Hey everybody, sorry for the quick cut to this. Um, basically the top cut just, uh, it was like back to back, just like I was thinking. Um, each uh, top eight and then in my top four matches, they just went straight into each other uh, after, and went into overtime. So I had no break in between, literally went right to the next match. So I couldn't really say anything. Um, and it actually is, this is the day afterwards. So I've had some time to relax you know, it went into, it was like like 10.30 by the time I left. So it was 10.30 p.m., um, obviously. So it, it, was, it, was, it was an exhausting day. Uh, we drove up there, as you guys saw, it um, took about like five and a half hours to get there. And we got there, uh, had some lunch, and played straight seven, eight hours of Pokemon. And you know, it was fun, it was definitely worth it. Uh, placed third overall. Um, as you can tell by the title of the videos, top four placement, feeling pretty good. Now I'm at a total of 84, no, 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 87 championship points for the season so far out of, I don't know what it is yet, Pokemon has yet to announce that. Like I said in my um, analysis of the whole season video, which you can check out on the channel, I'll put a time card up right now. I believe that uh, Pokemon will let us know probably um, in the middle of next quarter as soon as they get a feel of how much points people are at now. To kind of see um, and gauge what that level should be. I, I could also see them putting the, the championship points, how much you need to get uh, your world's invite um, notification out probably in quarter three. So uh, who knows? We'll, we'll wait out and see that. But um, so here's my deck uh, that I used to get uh, third at uh, the Spokane Cup uh, yesterday, which was on the 29th of uh, September. So yeah, let's go over it real quick. Uh, it's pretty... I mean, every single Lycanroc deck that placed well at Philadelphia, right? There wasn't one that everybody used. It was kind of, there was people that wanted a heavier Lycanroc line, but they also had different techs in, um, tech cards, and the, the Devoured Field was a little mixed. I mean, your supporter line was always mixed. So I kind of just went on my own rendition this time around. Um, sometimes I like pick uh, somebody's list and then change it a little bit, but I kind of just went from scratch uh, Almost and just I had no idea what the uh, the meta was gonna be like right because it's, it's not my area so and I didn't really have anybody that um, I had off the top of my mind I guess some of my friends actually have some friends up there that I could have probably asked them what uh, the metas like but I was just going in uh, pr pretty much blind and um, You know, I was assuming I was gonna see shrine decks right because it won uh, Philly that was the regionals that just happened before this um, and uh, I was expecting you know some Ray decks uh, that kind of thing so I was like okay what's the most what's the most consistent thing I can use that has a good chance against everything and I I decided to go Zorark like rock I played a few games with it the night before um, I was really conflicted on what I wanted to play to be completely honest I was debating like to do uh, like a Metagross build even just because I just hate playing against Shrine so much and Metagross I think has like a 60 60 40 matchup against Shrine um, So I was just wanting to, I was thinking about playing that it actually got into the finals by the way um, So don't be sleeping on Metagross Metagross is really good It's just I feel like it I, I wanted to do something that was more consistent and I didn't want to have to like drive up you know almost six hours uh, to this place and just you know with because of inconsistencies so that's why I decided to go with this guy so this is Zorark Lycanroc so let's go ahead and go over the deck um, and then I'll go over my matchups and we will just start with the Pokemon line as uh, we've got here we've got the basic 4-4 line of Zorark maximum consistency one Buzzwool, this actually came in handy a lot of the times. Um, it just awesome one prize attacker uh, whenever they go on four prizes, right? Because you're either attacking with your Zoroarks or you're attacking with your Lycanrocs. Um, uh, and 
at the beginning of the game. And once they get return knocked out, then you can clean up with Buzzwool. And it's kind of hard to hit that 130 number, to be completely honest. Um, Deancey, strictly here just so I can um, consistently hit 130 with Claw Slash. Um, so um, I can knock out all the baby buzzes in Shrine decks and uh, other pesky 130 Pokemon. Um, so yeah. As well as also takes out 120, so like Garbodor, uh, blah blah blah. You guys get that, so pretty obvious. Anyways, um, I also have Tapu Koko in here. I was actually debating on putting in Feramosa just uh, in case, uh, the, you know, the baby Feramosa, the one that does uh, 20 for a colorless energy uh, high jump kick. I was thinking of putting that in just in case if I face the mirror, but um, I didn't. I actually didn't. I think I was the only Zoroark, Zoro, Zoro Rock player at this tournament. There might have been one or two I did not see, um, but from what I saw, I did not see any Zoro Rock players. Uh, the meta was really flooded with, I was really surprised. Uh, it was uh, Stack Attacka, the Beast Box. I was really surprised to see that deck. There was like four or five builds of that. It was insane. Um, there was like two or three Metagrosses. Um, there was quite a few Vika Rays. It was like three or four of those. Um, three Shrines, four Shrines. And then, um, what was the other deck that, uh, uh, there was a bunch of other stuff. There was a couple Malamars, and then there was probably just a few other, like, odds and end instincts. I actually played against two really, um, out there decks I was not expecting whatsoever that came. We'll get to that. Um, but, yeah, but Tapu Koko actually helped me a lot in, uh, round four, which I'll, t I'll tell you about in a little bit. Really, really clutch. Um, I, I would not have, uh... I, I would if I play this deck again, Tabu Coco is a for sure thing in this deck. It helps you set up set up those numbers that you absolutely can uh, be chill about uh, once you do one just one flying flip really just helps a lot, especially when you run Choice Band Kikui and Devoured Field. That 20 damage is just it's super clutch. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and keep going here. Two Tabu Lele. That's really all I ever needed. Uh, sometimes I only needed just really one. There was only like maybe one or two games I needed the other, but um, yeah, two Tapu Lele for that consistency. Also, just in case if you start it or whatever, you have another in the deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one Field Blower. Now, this is an inclusion uh, a lot of people aren't uh, running because they just don't respect it for whatever reason. I think Field Blower is really, really good um, in this format right now just because people aren't expecting Field, blo field Blower. Um, you see decks like Zoroark starting to run Weakness Policy, and I was like, I was thinking to myself building this, I was like, I want to one hit knock out those Zoroarks with Claw Slash. Like, I don't want to have to like mess around with that. So I'm put a field blower in, uh, as well as it helps with uh, taking out shrines, um, as well as I was expecting some Vika Rays if I played against them, that they might also be using Wishful Baton. And as you know, if I don't get rid of Wishful Baton, I have absolutely no chance of standing up to Vika Ray. So, um, I just put one field blower in because, you know, I was scared of that and I'm glad I did because I, I did run into a couple, uh, situations where I, I absolutely need to get rid of like a choice band or, uh, to live for a turn or, um, I mean, I do have, I do play two devoured fields, but you know, uh, when I, when you don't hit them, I mean, you still have a field blower. I could use, uh, put, put in three devoured fields like a lot of lists do instead of just the, uh, one and two line of the field blower devoured field but uh honestly i mean field blower i think is a really good inclusion in this deck and uh i would keep it in for sure uh for great ball that's this is a new thing that people are doing and you know what uh it proved to be very successful uh both in the testing and in the league cup uh people were really surprised that i was using great ball it's just it's really good right like if you think of it as um if you think of it as a card it's like you can get a Pokemon off of a Sycamore or something. It's very, very good. And somebody did the math on it. I can't really remember who it was. It was on one of the forums, like Verbank City. Or so somebody said something along the lines of like, if you, before you do any nest balls, any search, whatever, if you play a great ball, two great balls out of your hand or whatever, you have like a 77, almost 80% chance of getting a Pokemon, which is really, really good. Uh, quite honestly, it just helps you. I, I consistently had like three or four Pokemon on my bench, like two Zeruas and a Rock Ruff, or you know, a mixture of the of those. And I mean, Great Ball really just helps with that. It was just such a good card. Um, you know, before Worlds, right? This was a terrible card, but now it's it's a really great card. So, 
No pun intended. Anyways, so we're gonna move on. We got a multi-switch. This actually helped a lot. I almost squeaked by in top four uh, with this card, but I just was one one turn too short. I'll explain that later. Uh, four Nest Ball, of course. Uh, one Pal Pad. Uh, one Rescue Stretcher. Four Ultra Ball. Two Devoured Field. Uh, came in came in clutch, helping me hit those 130 numbers with Zorark. Um, yeah, I mean, the Bower Field's really good. I think I'll, you only need two, honestly, and a Field Blower. I think that's that's good numbers right there. Uh, one Acerola. Love Acerola. Just, th this card in general is just, if you play it at the right turn, it's just, that's that's the turning point of the game, quite honestly, a lot of the time. Um, just love Acerola in the deck. I want to do two if I, if I had the space. Um, I'm sure I probably could make the space somewhere, but... Uh, as it stands, I think this line of supporters is really good. Uh, one Cynthia, three Guzma, three Judge, two Lily, one Mallow, and two Kikui. Um, I don't think you need anything else, honestly. I, I didn't miss turn one Lily uh, at all. I, I hit it every single game, um, except for I didn't I didn't use it at all during round two, which I'll talk about. Um, but uh, because I had four Mulligans, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, Lily's great. Helps you pull more great balls and S balls and basic Pokemon. Um, three choice bands, uh, just that maximum consistency so you can hit those numbers. Four double colorless and four fighting energy. Perfect eight energy in the deck. And all right, so let's get right on to the round. So uh, started round one. Uh, I went against uh, Rukan's Philly list, uh, the Malamar uh, gas can list. I still don't know why they call it gas can. If somebody can explain that to me, why they call it gas can. I'm sure it's a simple Google search, but you know, why don't you guys get some interaction going on? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I, I played against Malamar. Um, he got a really strong start. I think he had two Inke down, uh, turn one, and a Mar Shadow down. And I was like, okay, here we go. So. Uh, I was able to do a strong start myself. I had like three Zerua, uh, a Rock Ruff, and a Tapu Koko in the active. And um, and then his next turn, I think he, I think he Ultra Balled two, uh, two, his two last cards in hand. And I think he was searching for a Lele, but it was prized. His last Lele was prized. And um, he had one in play and one that was prized. And he uh, he just grabbed a Malamar instead. Um, and this was after a let loose as well. So I was sitting at four cards, and so he ultra balled uh, everything out of his hand, and he got a, a Malamar. So I knew exactly what he had, and I just kind of steamrolled from there. He was just relying on top decks at that point. Um, I was able to knock out both Malamars uh, with, uh, Rytus beating. I knew he could not, uh, power up that Marshadow in time because he had no energy on it. Um, even if he got Malamar energy attachment, that's still only two energy. There was nothing in the disc discard pile at the time either that he could have <coughs> used. So, um, I kind of just, you know, steamrolled through that, uh, unfortunate, uh, my opponent's prizes there, but, um, yeah, I was able to pull out the win on round one feeling pretty good then I go into round two and I played against this weird Lycanroc Gardevoir deck I was like what in the world so my opponent uh starts Lele I start Rockruff I believe and then um he had four mulligans so I had like like a 13 14 card hand and I'm like I have Lily in hand but I have a bunch of like useless stuff like I have two devoured fields two choice bands um you know like my pal pad like stuff that i didn't need right there right like i just needed my basic pokemon and i couldn't get any of them i got like one Zor zorua down and i just like i had uh, one zorua in the bench one rock rough in the active so i attached like both bands put down a devoured field um i think uh i don't i don't know i, I did something where i could like draw two more cards with lily this is the only supporter in my hand, and um, I got nothing. And so then I passed it off to my opponent. Didn't even get an energy attachment either, which was really sad. Um, and then uh, my opponent had puts a Ralts down, uh, attaches an energy to Ralts, passes. I get a judge, so I want to judge all this stuff away. So I judged it all away, and I got absolutely nothing off of the judge. And then my opponent does really well off of his end on his end of the judge. He gets Rare Candy, Gardevoir, uh, Energy, uh, Secret Spring, Retreat, uh, 
or I think it was double colorless, and then knocks out my Ralts, and I just have a lone, or knocks out my uh, uh, Rock Ruff, and I have a lone Zeru. I'm like, oh, geez, what do I do now? So I luckily top deck uh, my Cynthia, and then I get uh, a couple more Pokemon. I get another Zeru and a Rock Ruff down, but still no energy. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I have eight energy in the deck. What's going on? Um, you know, yet I still have not had a deck search yet, so I, I had no idea that during this time there was two double colorless prized at the time. So uh, I, I don't know what was going on. I missed a fighting energy attachment. I just wanted to like get it attached to like Rock Ruff or something, or I would even settle with a DCE because um, I could do something with Zorark later. But uh, I had no bench Pokemon, so Zorark's output was doing nothing. Plus, uh, the darkness resistance on Gardevoir was just a problem. So I was like, oh my gosh, I just need to like hit something here. And so, as you could probably guess, uh, my opponent ends up like, by the end of the game, my opponent had nine energy on the Gardevoir. And I just, I couldn't, I, there was nothing I could do. That Gardevoir literally swept me the entire game. Um, I was like, what in the world? Uh, he had Lady in the deck, so he had like four energy. He had four, he had uh, like a uh, fairy and uh fighting energy I was like how did this thing work how did this thing like like actually work um, but you know it just completely swept me there was no lichen rock he literally only had two leleys down because he knew what lichen rock did right like if he benched more I could have blown up that Gardevoir and he had nothing nothing left but yeah it did not happen so I lost there I was feeling pretty bad um, I knew that I for sure had to go three one in order to maybe ID so I was hoping, okay, I just need to win three, round three and four, and we'll see what happens. So going to round three, um, playing against Metagross, um, I won the coin flip, and I was able to like um, be pretty, or I, actually, I'm not sure if I remember if I won the coin flip or not, but I was I was pretty um, on the offensive most of the time of the game, right? I was uh, able to get down like two Rock Rough, I had like three Zerua down, and um, I think I had my Top of Coco down or something like that. And just evolved everything except for the other rock rough and i was able to lichen rock um a uh he only got two beldum down right so i and he, he had to beacon and he was getting nothing out of his beacon so he was really like bricking there and so i bloodthirsty eyes the beldum and uh knocked out the beldum now when he beaconed he got uh, a matang and a metagross so i assumed he had like a rare candy in hand or something but he didn't he put down the matang he was kind of bluffing there and he had to beacon again, and then I uh, Guzma knocked out the um, the Matang, and then my opponent literally uh, it was just I steamrolled him from there. There was there was nothing he could really do. Um, I was just too far ahead, and when he finally did get a Metagross up, he had five on his bench, and I just dangerous rogued it. And um, I think he algorithm algorithm that turn, so he put one energy to it to himself, and then I judged him, and it, it was just over. It was. It was a really steamroll kind of match, um, but yeah, uh, really do like Metagross though. Uh, he just did not get his Beldums down, and that's that's the main problem. That's what I was fearing taking if I was going to take Metagross right. If I, if I did and I couldn't get my, down my Beldums, I would have been really really upset. But um, yep, so I was able to win that matchup pretty well. Uh, going into round four, I played against uh, this really cool. I really want to try this on the channel. It's a Ho Oh Salazzle Reshiram GX deck. Uh, I remember this guy's name because it, it was my name. And um, so, uh, no, no, it was Enrique. It was my name in Spanish. That's what I mean to say. Uh, so I was playing against Enrique, and he was playing this really awesome build of Ho Oh Salazzle Reshiram from the new Dragon Majesty set. And um, his restaurant, his one inclusion of restaurant was prized, so it was really hurting him. And there was one turn, he won the coin flip, right? And I had a Zorua, or I had a uh, Rock Ruff and a Zorua uh, bent. I had a Zorua bench and Rock Ruff active. Had an energy attachment to the Rock Ruff. And, or no, no, it was the other way around. Zorua active with a DCE and a Rock Ruff on the bench. And um, he had a Salazzle, or he had a Salandit with two Fire Energy on it, and he Cynthia's for six. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if he gets, if he get, if he gets uh, the um, the Salazzle, I'm just done. Heat blast, heat blast me for 110. I am, I'm going home at this point. But no, he he whiffed the Salazzle, and I was like, my heart was just racing. He retreats, goes into the Lele, 
And at that point, I was able to set up really well. I got down two more Zoruas, uh, my Zoroark, I evolved it. Um, and then I, I just like, I was kind of just like really like going on all four cylinders at that point. I also uh, prioritized getting out my Tapu Koko um, and flying flip. I was able to flying flip like three times or something like that or two times to just set up the numbers. Um, he, there was a point where he had Turtonator and he used his Nitro Tank, got like all six or all five energy out onto the board. He put like three onto um, the uh, three onto what is it? His um, his Ho Oh, and he put two onto the Turtonator. And so I basically ride is beating his uh, Turtonator for like 150 or something like that. Um, or no, 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 I had a 150, 160, um, or no, I think it was 150 actually. Yep, it was. And then I Guzmud his Ho Oh on the bench that had three energy on it with Coco, Choice Band, does 100 to the Ho Oh. And then his Lele was also heavily damaged from a previous ride of speeding that I did to it. So um, I just had to flying flip two more times, and, or uh, one more time to knock out both the Lele and the. Um, and the uh, the Turtonator, and uh, he missed the energy attachment on the Ho Oh that turn. I also had Rescue Stretcher to bring it back and do it, but um, regardless, he missed the energy attachment, and he had the Guzma, and I had the other Guzma, so I brought up like another Lele and flying flipped, knocked out both uh, the Lele and the Turtonator, going down to two prizes. My opponent, I think, had like five or four, and I had the Guzma for next game um, to just take if he didn't bring up the Ho Oh, but he brought up the Ho Oh. Um, knocked out the Tabu Coco, and I was just able to freely ride his beating for my last two prizes. So um, it's a really cool build. Uh, it was just a shame he prized the Reshiram. Um, it could have been a huge different change in the game, but the key turn there was when he missed uh, Salazzle, and I was just super, super happy that that uh, that he missed it. But it, it was a feel bad moment for Enrique, and I my heart goes out to him because he is a really good player and. Um, it was, it was a good match regardless. Uh, so, good game to you, Enrique. And so I went into round five against uh, another shri or a Shrine deck that, um, uh, you know, I was doing pretty well, obviously, going into round five. I'm three, or I'm I'm four and one. Yeah, four and one. Wait, no, no, no. I'm three and one. There's five rounds. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, okay, like, so this is probably like the hardest matchup, right? You have to think a lot and make sure that you're knocking out um, things in the right order, like go after the slugs as much as possible. Um, you can play around their sludge hammer turn. And my opponent luckily bricked in the first like three turns. He, he did not hit his supporters at all. And I was able to just knock out everything with Lycanroc. I also got Deancey down, so I was just claw slashing everything. Ace Arolad, uh, my Zorark that he heavily damaged. Um, during one turn and I was just able to win there. Um, I was thinking I was maybe gonna be able to ID during round five, but there was um, and there was already like five people that were three and one. So couldn't do that. So I had to win this one and I did and I think I placed like second or third seed. I can't really remember something like that because the top two tables. So there's four people that I did after round three. So I, I was definitely like the second or third uh, seed. So, uh, because I placed third overall, so that, that's how I knew that. I, I, he didn't have a printer, the, the organizer, so I wasn't able to take a picture and like fully like see what the seeds of the tournament structure was. So I didn't really know who I was playing, but um, so in top eight, uh, I played against Patty, who was playing a Shrine deck. Um, it was, this, this was a really intense uh, set of games. So like round one, uh, I, I won the coin flip, I believe. Um, and I was able to, every single one of these rounds, right? I was like turn two or three, I was able to bloodthirsty eyes, ride a speeding or claw slash the slugma. I just knew that you have to take out the slugs as fast as possible. Cause like that is their consistency. And so I was able to do that consistently. Um, and round one, right, I was able to kind of like steamroll with just Claw Slash, and that was pretty much it. Round two, I was able to do the same thing, um, however, he was able to build up another Slug uh, during like the Sludge Hammer turn or something, so he knew that um, it was going to be really hard for me to like knock it out. Um, I had to deal with, um, 
I was just on the back foot at that point, so I really had to like take the active knockout. Uh, I can't remember why exactly. I, I think I, I'm not quite entirely sure, but um, he was able to build up another mag cargo, and it was uh, it it was it was hard for me. And I was able to maybe come back with like um, baby buzz. There was a turn I was able to come back on his four prize turn. But uh, overall, I just cu I couldn't I couldn't pull through. So uh, I lost round two. Then round three, uh, it was four. I I was at three prizes and he was at four, and it was t it was called time on his turn. So he was zero, I was one, he was two, and then I was the last turn three. Um, so turn zero, um, I don't think he took a knockout. Turn one, I didn't take a knockout. Um, uh, or I I wasn't able to take a knockout, but I was able to maybe uh, make sure um, it was hard for him to do something. He didn't have Mag Cargo out, so he did have a Rangaroo. Or wait, no, he did get a Mag Cargo. He got Mag Cargo out at, the, at late game, but uh, he didn't have anything really uh, set up to take a knockout. He had like two Trubbishes on the bench, and um, so he this was so i was like okay so he needs like a really big combo to get like two prizes here he needs to take two prizes because um if he doesn't it'll become my turn i have guzma to take out any one prize that i want and i will go up on prizes and i'll win um or else it'll go down to two to two prizes if he takes his two prizes so he's got to think on what he's going to do here um he needs to get he basically needs to get guzma because i i promote my diancy after an acerola play so i acerola Zor zorark up and um promote my diancy so he's got to get hit guzma switch th this is his whole combo he has to hit he has to hit guzma switch and like beast energy or guzma switch and counter energy to knock out one of my zorarks because uh, he had one energy already attached to uh, his Buzzwool. He also had DNC Prize. So he, he was able to knock out my Zorark if he had the, the right cards. Um, but um, yeah, so um, he he took a long time like figuring out what he wanted to smooth over, right? It was already time, so it didn't matter. And he ends up smooth overing for a Guzma and then uh, hits two more cards. Um, and just, it wasn't, it wasn't what he needed. And I had the Guzma. Uh, he just scooped anyways after that, um, uh, after he Orangaroo for those two cards. And that was the game. So really, really intense set of games, uh, to Patty. Good game. Good games, Patty. And, uh, I went on to top four against, uh, Sammy, who was playing Beaker Ray. Uh, I won the coin flip and I was able to, uh, really capitalize round one. I was just like targeting those Grubbins, like nonstop. Uh, he Tempest, and I was able to judge that turn. I mean, I was just doing exactly what this deck needed to do against uh, Vika Ray, and I was just taking out the Grubbins. I took out, like, three Grubbins, I think, that game, just, like, making sure. I could have Dangerous Rogue took out, like, a knockout on Ray, but I was like, nah, forget it. I'm just going to go after the Grubbin. Definitely was worth it, and um, that was that. Uh, won that game. Went to round two. Uh, he, he was able to get up uh, Vika Volt pretty fast. Um, he got two Grubbins down and he went first, right? So it's really hard for me to really capitalize. Um, and yep, pretty much any, I think he also marsh out of me, so I didn't really have much as well. Uh, but he was able to get up like eight energy at that point And he just like steamrolled me. It was really like, it was, there was a turn where I promoted Zorark, um, and was able to take a knockout with Devour Field, Choice Bang, Professor Kukui on his active ray. But it didn't matter. He had energy attachment and Vika Volt on the next ray just to knock that out. And return knock out my Zorark. He goes down to one prize. I have two prizes. I'm like, okay, <laughs> there's nothing I could do here. Um, I could Guzma, but he could just like, it doesn't matter, right? Because he could just v Vika Volt attach and then just knock out whatever's in my active. So regardless, um, uh, we went on to round three and it was I set up. Uh, I went first, obviously, and I set up my board, and time was called, and I was like, okay. It's a shame that I started Rockruff, because I had Rockruff and Zor Zoru in my opening hand, and I started Rockruff. I knew that we wouldn't go into time, but I didn't... I knew that we would go into time, but I did not think that it would be as soon as it did, um, because had it was, like, called maybe a couple turns later, he would have had, like, maybe a fuller bench, and I would have been able to, like, maybe Dangerous Rogue something... Uh, that was my overall process, right? I wanted to start Rock Up so I could um, Dangerous Rogue whatever I wanted or Claw Slash whatever I wanted. Um, but, you know, I, I went first. I was like, okay, cool. Um, it really was the, the first prize takes uh, wins, right? It went 
uh, turn zero, one, two, three. Still, nobody took any prizes. So it was the next prize wins. So I was turn zero. I was like, okay. I actually judge him that turn and hoping to hit an energy. Did not hit an energy. Or no, I Lily did not hit any energy. And I was like, okay, crap. Um, he goes, uh, gets his uh, Tempest off um, and a couple Grubbins, or gets a Grubbin and another uh, Ray down. So he has two energy on the board. I judge, still no energy. Or no, I hit a DCE, I think. And um, then he, I think he Cynthia's. No, no, he, uh, I can't remember what he did on that turn. Um, that it was, it was, it was crucial that he had, he, it was crucial to note that he had two rare candies uh, in the discard already and a Vika Volt. And I'm like, okay, I just need to make this super hard for him to like uh, get a knockout. Um, so I had, a, I had the option uh, to Guzma or to Judge. And so I decided to judge because he had a pretty big hand. And I was confident that he had Vikavolt candy somehow. Um, I had, so, but he was able to, to Guzma the previous turn, right? And then um, I had my baby buzz in the active. So all he needed was Vikavolt rare candy to uh, knock my, my buzz wall out. Um, yeah, 30, 60, 90, 120 and attachment for turn, which he, he did have the attachment for the next turn. So, he really just needed rare candy Vika Volt, and um, so I judge him down to four, and he hits uh, attachment, and then Cynthia, and he hits rare candy. It was either his one of his last two that were in the deck, or if one was prized, it was his last candy rescue stretcher for the Vika Volt, and knocks out my baby buzz and wins uh, through time. It was a super close intense game. And then I top deck my Guzma. I had multi-switch in hand. So I could have multi-switched the DCE that was on my rock rough to my Zorark and uh, knocked out the grub and had he missed the candy Vika Volt. Super, super close. I was like, no, I had the Guzma. Like, to I had two trades to dig into it, right? I still had my Lele's, Ultra Balls, Great Balls, whatever. I definitely would have had gotten Guzma. I had three Guzma in the deck. Ready, just, I was ready to go. Um, but, <laughs> yep, he, he got it. I, was, I told him, I was like, if you don't have it this turn, I, I definitely do. But, uh, really, really good game, Sammy. And he went, he actually went on to the finals to play against Metagross, and he won uh, as well. So, congrats to you, Sammy. It was a really, really intense game. Uh, set of games and yeah, it was a lot of fun and I, I'm glad I placed third actually it was definitely worth the trek up there and Yep sitting at 87 points now for the season and Yeah, I uh, I really like the deck. Uh, there's a couple things I might do to it later in standard But now I'm gonna focus a lot on expanded because I have an expanded cup coming up later um, there is a standard cup that's coming, but I also am hosting my own uh, cup the following day, and I don't really want to travel a couple hours to go to that one. It's just gonna, that would be a really intense weekend, and I'm already sitting pretty well right now, so we'll see what happens. Portland Regionals is also the first regionals that's coming up for me uh, here at the end of the month in October. So I'm going to be doing a lot of expanded stuff. I will put out one or two standard videos here and there on PTCGO. Um, but I've got more expanded content coming for you guys. I apologize I didn't get anything really much out last week. Actually, I got nothing out last week for you guys. So I really am sorry about that uh, deck-wise. But I actually have like four or five uh, decks ready to go. I'm actually, right after this video, I'm going to record one. So thanks again for watching, everybody. And to all the guys I met up in Spokane uh, who I played against, uh, you guys were all awesome. Uh, I made a lot of really cool friends up there. And I hope to play you guys and see you guys again in the future. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. So uh, have a great night, day, wherever you're at. And I'll see you guys later.